Hi friends, it's Grace and welcome back to another video. Today it is time to wrap up my June edition of reading booktubers favorite books. So if you recall from my June TBR, the book that I picked out of the jar for this month was The Jasmine Throne by Tasha Suri. And so this was put in there and recommended to me by Angela from Literature Science Alliance. And I've been really excited about this book for quite some time. Um, I really, really love the idea of this magic system and kind of like a vibrant cultural world and a female-female romance that we get to follow. And not only a romance, but just kind of the development of a deeper relationship between the two main characters that we are presented with. And so um, I was excited to get into this one. And right off, what I'm going to start with is Angela's clip about why she recommended this to me. And then we will move on to the vlog portion of the video. All right, so Grace, you're about to read The Jasmine Throne, or you've read The Jasmine Throne. I don't know when you're watching this clip, how this clip makes it into your video, but I'm just excited that it's finally time and that it's happening for you in June, because this, if you cannot tell, is a summer fantasy read. I'm not a seasonal reader, but I've read this twice in the summer, and it is the ideal time to read it, in my opinion. I think the first time I read this book, it was one of those early days of summer in June in Boston where we didn't have any of the A season yet and we were just dying of the humidity. It was like 90 degrees. So I felt very here because this is a very humid landscape. I'm really excited to see what you think about Priya and Malini and the nature magic and the politics and the rebellion and the secrets and the mysteries. It just has everything that you and I both love in fantasy. So I'm, I'm really hoping you vibe with it. <laughs> like more and more, you've been reading some of my favorite books and having the same experiences. So I'm feeling even more confident than when you first asked me to give a book that this is gonna work out really well for you. I'm sure Grace has already talked about what this book is about. I told her to read it because I saw that it was already on her physical TBR and I try to help people read down their TBRs when I can. <laughs> but also I purposely went out of my way to buy the Illumicrate edition. And one, I don't usually buy special editions. And two, I usually definitely don't buy UK special editions because they don't, they don't open very well and it drives me bonkers as someone from the United States. But with these sprayed edges and it's the only hard copy available, I couldn't not. And I primarily love this story because it has all the hallmarks that I love from epic political fantasy. We have this magic system loosely tied to natural forces that we don't really understand. And there is curse upon the land. I love those things. We have a princess locked away in a tower who has her own schemes and we're trying to figure out what that is. And that princess and our character here who has connection to the nature magic get to intersect. And it's so claustrophobic in this book because we're on top of this tower. And I love that for character interactions. It's some of my favorite stuff. And then in the background, we do have this rebellion because the land we are in and the land where Priya's people are from has been oppressed. It's It's been occupied by an opposing force. Malini's brother is in charge and they don't want that anymore. And I, so far, this series has done a really good job of tackling both the magical aspects and the people societal aspects of it all. Um, there's another character in here, Bumika, who is phenomenal. Love her so much. So basically, if you love strong female characters, you love rebellions, you love politics, you love magic you don't understand, you gotta you got try it out. This is one of the strongest adult fantasy trilogies that are out right now, and I love the covers too. Like, I love them so much. Like, this is, Priya looks so good in this, and I love the warm tones of it all. So yeah, I am excited to watch this video and I cannot wait to hear what you think, Grace. So I love listening to what Angela had to say about this and why she recommends it to me. And the thing is, uh, Angela and I's taste quite often overlaps and I very much trust her recommendations. And so I just, it makes me happy to hear the reasons why uh, she thought that I would enjoy The Jasmine Throne. And this has been something that I really needed the push to read because I bought it when it came out and then I just didn't get around to it. So. Um, Let's go ahead and get right on into my reading journey of this book. Hello, so it is time for the vlog portion of the video where I start reading a book that I'm holding the wrong way, which would be, you already know what it is. It's The Jasmine Throne by Tasha Suri. So uh, yeah, the, the light is failing. Um, I don't know why it's so cloudy out. I had to turn the light on to film this clip, but um, The Jasmine Throne by Tasha Suri. Very excited about this. It is about 530 pages, so uh, it's also an Orbit paperback, so I feel like it's not actually that long. 
and I am gonna get into it hoping that it uh, grabs me and that it reads somewhat quickly and um, I will update you whenever I guess something significant happens. Hello, so I have just finished a night shift and I read more of the Jasmine Throne um, on said night shift. So I'm about 120 pages in now and I thought it was a good spot for an update because uh, my first sitting I read 50 pages, but I didn't want to update just because admittedly I didn't find the first 50 pages all that interesting and I didn't think that that would make a great update. However, something happened around the 70 to 75 page mark that was very intriguing. It was kind of our first taste of like action and stuff really happening after kind of like the setup um, and so I was really into that chapter uh, and so after that I've definitely been more interested. Uh, I am a little bit uh, like surprised by how many perspectives we've gotten already. I think we've got five character perspectives if I'm not mistaken uh, already and so I guess that we have our main perspective as Priya the maidservant. Um, I was honestly expecting like a Princess Malini perspective and a Priya perspective and that's like it. Like I was expecting it to be split equally between the two of them, which is very much not the case. It's multi POV and it is relatively evenly split with Priya being the person who we've read the most from so far. Um, however, it does seem like with the way the plot is progressing at this point, that could change. Uh, but yeah, I, I definitely am intrigued now and I'm definitely super happy that I'm more interested than I was at the 50 page mark. Um, and, and hopefully it just continues from here. Hi friends! So last night I got to close to page 220, I think, of The Jasmine Throne. And I can say I'm having mixed feelings about it right now. I'm liking it, but there are certain things that are kind of standing out that I'm liking and then everything else is kind of like... I don't know, not doing it for me as much. Like right now, the things that I'm really interested in are Priya's kind of internal relationship with this power that she used to have. And then I'm also really enjoying uh, Priya and Malini's relationship and how that's sort of slowly developing as they get um, kind of more chances to interact with each other and a little bit more like intimate in terms of trying to figure out like whether they can trust each other. I'm really enjoying that and the kind of like description of Priya's attraction to her. Um, the other stuff though, like with the rebels and the politics of this empire and this kind of like conquered state that our characters live in, for some reason, like I I'm just not feeling the impact of that. Um, because of course, like when you talk about um, kind of like the, the righteous anger and the desire for justice that like sparks a rebellion, it's not actually hitting for me, so therefore when, when the rebels talk about their cause, I'm kind of like, okay, well, I don't really understand why I care. So that's where I'm at right now, but I think that like the, the interpersonal relationships are probably enough to carry me through with some pretty solid enjoyment of the book. Got another 70 pages down, and I'm probably about 55% um, of the way through the book now. And I'm really glad that we've continued to focus on Malini and Priya's relationship. And right now, um, I am enjoying a fair bit of the storyline, and I'm definitely enjoying the kind of internal taking down of the Empire more. Or, well, not taking down, but the, the planning. Oh, hello. Um, and I, I find that a lot more interesting than the storyline with... Um, the Ahiranyi rebels because I find their like that I understand their plight as a people and I'm really invested in Priya but in terms of Ashok I find I just like I just don't care about him at all I do like um, Bumika though and uh, and Vikram so like there are interesting characters here but yeah like when it comes to Ashok for whatever reason I, I just don't care about him at all. Like, is, that part is not doing it for me. And luckily, that hasn't been a huge part recently. And so I'm kind of hoping that this balance stays the way it is. Hi, friends. So it is long past time for another update on the Jasmine Throne because I only have about 100 pages left at this point and I've still been reading it every day. But for the past couple days, uh, I just, for one reason or another, have not had time to even film a short clip. Like, it's just been very chaotic. But... Here's the thing about this book. Um, I'm 
liking it, but I'm not feeling it on a deeper level. So that leaves me in a bit of a conundrum because I want to love it so badly, but, and there are parts that I do really enjoy. I've been really enjoying Priya and Malini, and I do find it very interesting, the politics in the wider empire, um, but the, the stuff that's kind of going on close to home in Ariana, it's just like, it's hitting one dimensional for me. Um, like, I don't have any sympathy for the rebels, like, they just are hitting so flat and one note. And, like, when Ashok, for example, interacts with anyone, I, like, it's it's almost like it's trying so hard to be, uh, like, filled with emotion, and I just don't feel it at all. Um, so that, of course, is a downside. My other slight complaint is that I feel like some of the messaging is a little bit on the nose and it's not even necessarily always overarching themes but i sometimes feel like um bits of like inner monologue or dialogue is sometimes just a little over explained like i feel like i'm being handheld a little bit which isn't always a bad thing but sometimes it's just been hitting and i'm like you could have left a sentence out of this and kind of allowed us to infer what it means and I think that it would have been more impactful instead of kind of telling us what it means. It's like explaining the punchline to a joke so that it's no longer funny. Um, but like it's not quite that bad, it's just something that I've noticed. So right now I'm kind of like, I guess I'm kind of like middling to positive feelings on this one and I feel like the ending is going to determine a lot for me. I finished The Jasmine Throne. And here's the thing about this book. So I think I'm settling on like a 3.75 or like 3.5 to 3.75 for this. Not totally sure yet. I'm probably just gonna think about it a little bit. But here's the thing. This is the exact type of book and this story where on a conceptual level, I'm super down for it. Like. Um, the Indian inspired world, this magic that is very nature based and like demands a price of the magic users, this um, idea of people who live in a nation that has been subjugated under imperial rule and the fact that you have like a cruel emperor and wider imperial politics that are going on all the while uh, while you have this central kind of like sapphic romance and a lot of strong female characters and also like some interesting male characters too. Um, all of those are pros that are objectively included in this book but somehow it all just didn't come together to really come to life for me and so that's where I'm kind of landing on like a 3.5 ish because like yeah it, it has all those things and that's good which is why it's not like a negative rating like I still love that all of those things were included but it's just very difficult because I didn't feel strongly about much of it. Um, like, I thought that it was interesting in a very detached way, and I was reading it just very, very passively. Like, it wasn't, uh, I don't know, like, I don't feel like these characters kind of came to life for me. Like, I don't feel as if I know them very well, and after a few weeks like this might not be that memorable um i guess we'll have to see obviously i don't know how memorable it will be yet but i guess in that sense it's a little bit of a disappointment but only because of my level of emotion like i think that this does deliver what it promises and obviously other people connect to it more than i do because of the number of people who really really enjoy this and like I wish that I did more, but that's just what it is. So I'll get back to the rest of the video where I will undoubtedly talk more about my final thoughts, but I'm going to consider my final rating for this a little bit and um, I'll let you know. 
Okay, so coming back to the present day, um, usually I will try and film these videos and get them put together a little bit sooner after I actually finish the book, um, but it has been about a week since I finished this, and this is just the first time that I'm really getting the opportunity to sit down and kind of like bulk film videos. And with that being said, since it has been a week, I'm able to um, stand by my rating a little bit more or like not stand by it but just that it's been able to settle and I'm a little bit more confident that this 3.5 is actually how I feel about it because um, sometimes what I realize is that a book maybe I didn't realize the emotional impact that it had immediately and after a while I will keep thinking about it and sometimes that causes me to up my rating um, because of the like lasting impact that it had and a great example of that is actually Piranesi by Susanna Clarke but I think that for the most part in my final vlog section I said most of what needs to be said about my feelings about this one so I stand by that 3.5 and the primary reason for that is just that like I mentioned there is so much in the concept of this book that I really should love um, and I, I really was excited to read this like Indian inspired world um, and I was kind of equating it to um, the City of Brass and the Devabad trilogy in my head. Not that those are the same cultures, but I was really excited to kind of have that feeling where like, say the food, the clothing, everything is like a little bit foreign to me personally with my experiences with those type of things. And I was really looking forward to just diving into this like detailed and like vibrant description of this world and really like sink into it. And like one example of this is in The Long Price Quartet by Daniel Abraham, like the way that he describes food. It's like it really brings the world to life. And I didn't feel that this had that for me, and it's hard to put my finger on why, whether it was the writing style, just like the word choices in the descriptions. Um, I'm not 100% sure why, but I think that that was kind of my problem as a whole, like as it applies to like the setting, the plot, the characters, um, it didn't really combine in a way that made it like vividly come to life in my head and so it's not that it was flat because I still thought that Tasha Story was doing a good job it's just that I didn't um really manage to connect on a deeper level and like take um Priya and Malini for example like our, our main characters there were times in the book where uh descriptions or like dialogue or feelings or whatever really like hit me and got to me and I was like oh yes like let's continue along this track where I'm really feeling emotions for our characters like I would love that like because I wanted to love this book so much but then it would kind of just be that one moment and then we would lose the thread of it and that's kind of just where it lands because like the idea of the romance and the idea of Priya and Malini's each individual character arcs as well like their goals what they were working towards their inner strength and like the personalities that they showed um, it's almost as if taking a step back and looking at it, I can say, yeah, those things were good, but they just didn't have that extra, like, je ne sais quoi, <laughs> making me love it. So that's where I land on the 3.5. And so I guess this is a little bit disappointing to me, um, but not meaning that it's a bad book, just in the sense that, once again, for some reason, I had this and David Bad tied together in my head, and I loved David Bad so much that... I was just fully expecting to feel the same way about this and it didn't quite hit that level for me. Um, one of my other small complaints is that there is, um, there's one storyline in this book that inevitably intertwines with other story threads later, but there's one particular character that I just couldn't find any, any care for. Like, I had sympathy uh, for his kind of like living situation and his goals, but the actual character, I didn't really think she did a good job of making him sympathetic and making me root for him at all. I actually, I didn't like him at all, but it wasn't in the way where it's not liking him in a good way. It was more like whenever I was reading from his perspective, I just wanted to get past that part of the book. I, I just didn't want to read that part of the book. So 
that was one weakness for me. Um, I am undecided on whether I'll continue and read The Oleander Sword. I think that I probably will because I like this enough that I want to see where it goes, but I think that The Oleander Sword is just not going to be like a high priority read for me, especially with how much I'm trying to commit to other series this year. So maybe that'll be a next year thing. Um, but yeah, this, this was a little bit of a middling book for me just because of the high expectations and then this disconnect that I have in my head about um, the things that I really love about it and the magic, this nature magic is included in that as well. I thought it was super cool, but once again, it's just not that deeper emotional connection that I personally really look for in my reading. So I obviously still trust Angela's recommendations wholeheartedly because the things that are billed about this book, like the selling points, I, I, it did deliver on those in my opinion. It just for some reason didn't deliver on them in a way that like fully worked for me, but it, it has all of those things and I think that if you um, are interested in the book because of some of those selling points and like buzzwords, you should definitely still pick it up. I am not shocked at all that people love this so much and I just wish that I was also one of those people, but I did like it. So yeah, um, it's a weird combination of feelings, but I still really, really appreciate Angela recommending this to me and I can totally see why she did. and. We'll just continue on with all the other things that we love in common. So with that said, those are my in-depth thoughts on The Jasmine Throne by Tasha Suri. Of course, I will have Angela's channel linked in the description if I didn't say that earlier. You should always go check her channel out. Angela's videos are fantastic. I love to hear the way she talks about books. And um, that is it for this video. So please like if you liked it and let me know what you think down in the comments below. As always, I'll have my socials and discord linked in the description as well. And I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. Bye.